Richard, do you hear anything as to why we reimbursed out for twenty eight hundred dollars for we reimburse them? Yeah. Call the uh, common calls made order. It is the <clears throat> second Tuesday of the month, seven o'clock. The date and time set aside for the regular meeting of the Nakusa Common Council. Could we uh, take roll call, please? Brian here. Larry here. Come. Yes. Here. Here. Colin. Yes. Greta here. Hamilton. Yes. Boom. Here. I did entertain a motion to approve the previous common council minutes. Oh. Motion second. second. <laughs> Motion second to approve the previous common council minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Then I did a motion to approve the treasurer's report. So moved. Second. Motion second to approve the treasurer's report. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next item on the agenda is citizens forum. George, do you have something? Okay. Uh, moving on then, uh, we have the 2019 audit report from Hawkins Ash CPAs. Take it away. Okay, okay, okay. All right, can everybody hear me? You bet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, have people done. I'm going to start. Um, Sean, maybe you can tell me quick does everybody have copies in front or do you want me to share my screen? We got, we got copies. We got both. Yeah, they've got this. Okay, then I'm not going to share my screen. I'll just read through it. So, uh, um, I'm Monica Hauser from Hawkins Ash CPAs, um, the partner in charge of your audit. Um, first of all, I thank you for letting me do this electronically and not having to drive up to Nakusa, although it's a nice drive. Um, so, we're going to start by we'll just do a pretty brief overview of 2018 compared to 2019. If there's questions, you can certainly ask me. Um, I think Sean's going to mute you, so you can ask me at the end if you want. But so we'll start by going through the summary financial statements. So that's the real thin book or the um, the short report with the colored graphs in it. So I'll comment on page two. This is the independent auditor's report for this booklet, and it just the second paragraph states that this does not contain all the required disclosures. So we do this for council presentation only. It's just a little bit easier to read than all the uh, the thick book with all the numbers in it. So we'll start by looking at the combined balance sheet for the city. So you can see there it's 2019 compared to 2018. We'll look at total assets and deferred outflows. So our overall, our total assets and deferred outflows increased to about 43,000 or 0.14%. So overall, very comparable, not a lot of changes in there. Under the liabilities or deferred inflows section, um, total liabilities increased about 36,000 or 0.2%. So again, that's very comparable. And the deferred inflows of resources increased about 23,000 or 1%. And a lot of this is just um, our tax roll and the Wisconsin Retirement Pension System based on an actuarial study. Then the equity, the net position represents water and sewer balance, fund balances. Your general fund balance, you can see, went from 2,111,044 in 2018 down to 1,898,758 in 2019. So we had a decrease of about 212,000 this year. Talk a little bit more um, on some of those details in a second, but every year I give you a percentage. What is your unassigned or available fund balance? as a percentage of your total expenses for general funds. This year, that percentage is 34%. Last year was 37%. So it's, it's still very, very good. I tell people anywhere from 25 to 35, there's no magical number, as long as you're not having to short-term borrow, and if you're able to do some projects without having to go out and borrow every time you need to do something. Um, so, you know, what I can see what we're doing is we're increasing the balances over a few years, then we'll do a project and spend some of that down. And then we'll build it back up, spend it down. Okay, then the other fund balances, those represent our other governmental funds. 
There's more detail in a few on a few pages back here, so we'll talk about that in a second. The graph shows your general fund balance. The blue line represents your overall total fund balance. The red represents your unassigned fund balance. So total for 2019 was 1,898,000 for total and your unassigned was 1,229,000. So you can see that unassigned fund balance has remained pretty consistent over the years. We just had a slight dip in the blue bar this year. Okay, next page is, so I'm on page four, general fund revenue. So we compare 2019 budget to actual and then to 2018 actual. Overall, our revenue was over budget about 209,000. So when we talk about uh, revenue being over budget, it's okay. And then if we compare that to the prior year, we increased about 64,000 or 1.9%. So overall, still very comparable. Some of the biggest changes um, in the insurance recovery, we had a bit more of that this year. Um, we had some, a little bit of um, insurance proceeds on the old, um, I think it was on the old fire building. And then our dividend for the insurance um, was bigger this year. And then, Sales of general fixed assets, that represents a trade-in value we got on, I think it was on a backhoe and a vehicle maybe. So that's where that 39,000 is coming from. The graph shows you where the revenue sources for the city of Nicosia are coming from. This is just our general fund, so I won't read those to you. Um, next page is our expenses. So you can see, do the same format, comparing budget to actual to the prior year. Total expenditures were over budget, 354,000. Um, so typically we're amending budgets, making sure we're pretty close. This year we were over. I think we ended up doing a lot more capital outlay than normal this year. Definitely more than we budgeted for. If we compare that number to 2018, we increased about 293,000 or between eight and nine percent. So I'll just remind you our big capital outlay items and remember this is in the general fund. So we got a backhoe, a truck, a canine vehicle, a police interceptor vehicle. We did some Cranmore road improvements, police radios, and um, I think it's Violet Avenue work. So those are the big projects we um, did for capital outlay. You can see the graph on the next page is our expenditures. You can see where the expenditures are going for the city. Um, I won't read that to you. Next, we're going to talk water sewer on page six. So overall, water revenue increased about thirteen thousand or one point three percent. So pretty up over, pretty comparable overall. On the sewer side of things, we increased about 76,000 or 12.9 percent. And so I'll remind you, we did a rate increase in 2019. So that's reflective of why the revenue was so much higher. Then you can see the operating income in about, about the middle of the page. Water, 394,000 for 2019. Sewer had a loss of 37,605 but much better than the prior year. The prior year was a loss of 109,000. So raising those rates was a good thing. It helped improve the um, financial situation for sewer there. You can see the overall change in net position, positive 107 for water and a loss of 131,000 for sewer. So just need to keep an eye on those rates making sure that we're generating enough revenue to cover um, to cover those expenses that we have. The graph on the next page shows our water and sewer net income. So you can see that um, the loss decreased for 2019, so that was good on, for the red bar, which is sewer. Next, on page seven, these are those other funds I talked about. 
So just if the schedule's out, we have special revenue funds and debt service fund. Um, you can see all the TIFs are listed there. The two that I wanted to point out, TIF 4 has a negative fund balance of 19571 and our capital project has a negative fund balance of 29139 So something, obviously the TIF fluctuates a lot and um, when we close those out, we deal with negative fund balances if they exist at that time. Um, but for capital projects, we need to look at that and um, whether or not we need to get some more revenue in that fund, whether the general fund has to cover those past expenses or where that money is going to come from. Then our overall financial information, um, we issued a clean, unmodified opinion, so that's the best opinion you can get. Um, we, we did this audit remotely this year because it hit right in the heart of the start of the COVID stuff. Um, so Joe and John, the folks at CLA were very good about getting us everything. Um, so Bobby B and Joe did a great job scanning us the request that we had. And I know it was probably a pain in their butt, but we got it done. Um, so you can see the capital asset activity there um, and then long-term debt. And we're still well below our debt limit, so no issues there. Then the only other comment I wanted to make was in the um, audit report, it's called the Independent Auditor's Report on Communications with Those Charged with Governance. If we had any issues during the audit, it would be noted in there. We did not have any issues, so I'm happy to report that. Um, and it's a very clean audit. We had one journal entry in here um, for less than 10,000 bucks. So very clean. Um, so appreciate all the work that everybody does to make sure that you're ready for us when we're ready to start the audit. So I'll open it up for questions unless somebody wants me to go into more detail on something. For the, for the sewer end of it, can she go? <coughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. For the sewer end of it, that was $131,000 deficit yet, give or take. Can you hear that? I couldn't hear him very good. Oh. He's asking about the sewer deficit of 131000 Yeah. Okay. Is that, is that, um, Looking, is that projected by you guys to disappear with the rates the way they are? Or can we maintain, or do we definitely have to just do a rate increase to make that number go away? Well, a lot of it depends on usage. Um, and I believe, I think you have a 20, you had an increase going into effect in 2020, didn't you? <clears throat> yes, it, it was our last raise, uh, Monica, last 10% raise in 2020, yes. Okay. That's in effect right now. We've, we've actually done a couple of things. We had the raise, plus we've eliminated during the summer months, we used right. to have a uh, sort of sewer, forgiveness for people that would use water for, you know, water in their gardens and stuff like that. We, we used to try and uh, cut back on the sewer because it wasn't going to the sewer. But by mm -hmm. doing that, if you did it for one, you had to do it for everybody. So we were kind of shooting ourselves in the foot. So we eliminated that, and the people who use the water like that are just going to have to pay that extra now. And I don't think that's going to amount to a whole lot when it's all said and done. But it's still better than everybody in the town getting the cut. Um, I mean, let's face it, we got to get rid of the deficit that 131000 one way or another and get back to running even. But that's why I'm wondering if, it, if we're channeling the right way now are we going to have to look at a major increase to get rid of that, or can we just keep, you know, chipping away at it the way we are? Yeah, I mean, you still have, you know, you have a $2 million fund balance in there. Now, that's not super high by any means, but I think if you just keep chipping away at it, obviously, if you're going to be at a loss of 200000 or or 100000 every year for 10 years, that's going to your fund balance can be gone really fast. Right. But if you can keep, you know, if you can cut the deficit in half every year or, you know, knock 75000 off of it, um, that'll help a lot. Okay. 
I've just so been looking I, for some guidance because I figure that sooner or later there's going to have to be a rate change and we're just talking percentages now trying to figure out what it's going to have to be. Right. It, it's just important to keep in mind, you know, what you did was you structured it so that every year you had these increases and that's good versus doing nothing and then all of a sudden you have to do a 50% increase. Right. So it's better to just keep um, doing slight increases so that um, the public, you know, is used to it and they understand that, hey, costs are going up every year. So. Yeah. Monica, the only other thing you can do is kind of look at some of your expenses and make sure that when we do the allocation that, you know, sewer is getting charged fairly for everything. Um, now, I don't know of anything from my perspective when I come in to do the audit that there's unfair, but, you know, you can certainly look at that and make sure wages are, you know, if people aren't working 60% in sewer and 40 in water, that that's how it's getting allocated and not 7525 because that's how it's always been done. Right. Okay, thank you. Monica, this is Joel. Um, do you think we, you know, we would have this five year plan, 10% down the sewer, and then this is the last year of it? Um, do you think that's something that maybe we should re up for another five years of that, or, uh, or three years of it, or uh, do you have any suggestion on that? or? Uh, um, I guess I can't tell you, um, I think you should do something, um, you know, I don't know, because obviously to have a rate study done costs you money too, um. We've improved a lot, um, but looking at your bar graphs, <clears throat> on the sewer end of it, it's still deficit, but, uh, that is something that I think is a Council is going to have to make a, uh, a commitment uh, sometime for next year, but do it this year for next year is uh, some type of uh, percentage increase. I don't know. Joel, just jumping in here, and Monica, this is Rick. Um, when we hired MSA as part of this Wood Avenue project, part of their uh, scope of services is to evaluate our cost uh, for sewer and water. And Joe, you were a big part of that, giving them a lot of information. I haven't seen that data come back, but one of the things I'd like them to do is present to this council on that analysis of our rates in relationship to that project. And, and maybe Monica and, and or, or John from CLA can be part of that discussion to look at these overall rates long-term. Because I agree, we might need to make some adjustments going into this next budget cycle this fall. It's probably what you're yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, because otherwise, like Monica says, it's better than doing nothing. Right. And, and, and it was a five-year uh, five plan. And uh, based, on the, yeah, based on these uh, bar graphs, it's improving quite a bit, but uh, we just got to keep it, uh, getting at least a balance out even anyway, right? So keep, keep the DNR off our backs. We, 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 we made some good strides the last five years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Keep going up, the DNR will stay off our back, otherwise they'll come in and they'll do it. We don't want that because that really matters. Yeah, just over, I'm just looking at the bar graph that she presented here in over three years, 17, 18, 19, I mean, we made, I consider to be a pretty good jump. Yeah, yeah. yeah over, over a third, not quite a half, but well over a third. Yep. So I think, I think we're moving in the right direction. Great. We can keep it going. Can you hear us, Monica, or not really? Not really. I can hear not, somebody not talking. I can't hear exactly yeah. <laughs> what you're saying. Oh, you missed so you big, ask me a question. Sorry. You missed a big rainstorm. Is that the, it's good you're home. So. There was we just, got one here to go. That was just some follow-up discussion about the strides that the city's made and improvements over that three-year um, time frame on the sewer chipping away. Well, and it's good that we're talking about it because obviously, you know, you can't just decide we're going to implement a new rate and put it into effect, you know, August 1st. It takes time. So, you know, it's good that we're talking about it now and, you know, we have some time to make some decisions and 
decided what we want to do for 2021. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. I don't think anybody else has anything. Anybody? Good. Thank you, Monica. Thanks, Thanks Monica. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for letting me do this. Take care, everyone. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> Well, after the audit report, we'll move on to committee reports. And the first committee report is Planning Commission, uh, Alderman Hamilton. Uh, Planning Commission had one meeting this month. Um, there's a correction on the second line for members present, and then there's a Others and our members present was uh, should be Gerald Portis, O R D E S, not Gerald Carlson. And with that, I move to adopt the minutes. Second. Uh, motion and second to adopt the me meeting minutes of the Planning Commission. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The Honorable Mayor, members of the Coosa Common Council, Planning Commission meeting was held on Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020, 6:30 p.m. Coosa Council Chambers. Members present were Dan Carlson, Mayor, Brad Hamilton, Terry Shemansky, Rick Schmidt from the DPW. Dan Downing, Gerald Cordes, and Brian Koopsack. Also in attendance were Garrett Kuhn, Mayor, um, excuse me, Municipal Judge Ashley Reimer, and City Attorney Nick Abst. Item one, City Attorney Nick Abst went through the proposed changes to the ordinance and the conditional use permits. Item two, recommend scheduling a public hearing on proposed changes to Municipal Code Chapter 17. Any questions? Move to adopt item two. Second. Motion and a second to adopt item two of the Planning Commission meeting uh, minutes. A roll call vote, please. Brian? Yes. Downing? Yes. Tom? Yes. Fearing? Yes. Larry? Yes. Breda? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Coon? Yes. Uh, next committee report is Ways and Means. Chairman Beery? Uh, the Ways and Means Committee has one meeting to report upon and has the minutes to be accepted as uh, written. Second. Motion and a second to accept the uh, minutes of the Ways and Means Committee meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 To the Honorable Mayor and members of the Pusa Common Council, the Ways and Means Committee meeting was held on Tuesday, June 14, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. <coughs> in the Pusa Council Chambers at City Hall. Members present were Adam Durink, Ryan Krupsek, Dan Downing, and Garrett Keene. Also in attendance were Mayor Dan Carlson, Larry Krupsek, Mike Kung, Rick Schmidt, Department of Public Works, Police Chief Sean Woods, and Ambulance Chief Joe Kirchmont. Item 1, the audited bill list. There were no license applications, nor were there any donation seminars, conferences, or meetings. So I'd like to make the motion to adopt item 1. Second. Motion and second to adopt item 1 of the Meetings <coughs> Committee report. Roll call vote, please. Come? Yes. Dolly? Yes. Duran? Yes. Larry? Yes. Coon? Yes. Brian? Yes. Fred? Yes. Uh, next committee report, Public Works. Mm -hmm. Public Works has one meeting to report on. I move that the minutes accepted as written. Second. Motion second. <coughs> second to accept the minutes of the Public Works Committee meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 To the Honorable Mayor, members of the Coosa Common Council, Public Works Committee meeting was held on Tuesday, July 7th, 2020, at 5 p.m. and in the Coosa Council Chambers. Members present were Larry Krupsek, Curtis Breda, Brad Hamilton, and Adam Beery. Also in attendance were Mayor Dan Carlson, Dan Downing, Garrett Kuhn, Todd Faulkner, Ambulance Chief Joe Crutchmeyer, and Carrie Edmondson, and Rick Schmidt from the DPW. Item 1, recommend the safe routes to school resolution R-0714-20 be signed by the mayor. Item 2, discuss the Coosa School District restroom concession building sewer connection. Item 3, recommend getting the city hall safety building doors painted at a cost of approximately $3,500. Item 4, discuss city hall safety building entrance and parking lot plans. Item 5, recommend having wastewater Treatment facility final clarifier dome painted at a cost of approximately $19,500. Item 6, discuss the Freeman Boat Launch Fishing Piers. Item 7, discuss build up, building up Riverside Park to help with runoff. 
Item 8, uh, training, equipment, and seminars were done. There's no questions. I move to adopt item 1, 3, 5. 1, 3, and 5. Second. Motion of second to adopt items 1, 3, and 5 of the Public Works Committee meeting minutes. Uh, roll call vote, please. Here? Yes. Coon? Yes. Breda? Yes. Cone? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Brian? Yes. Larry? Yes. Tony? Yes. Something's never changed right there. It's been all in years. <coughs> Next committee report is public safety, Chairman Bretto. <coughs> public safety is uh, one meeting to report. Uh, make a motion to accept the minutes. Second. Motion and second to accept the minutes of the Public Safety Committee meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 The Honorable Mayor, members of the Inclusive Common Council Public Safety Committee meeting was held on Tuesday, June 2nd, uh, the Council Chambers of City Hall. Members present were Curtis Breda, Mike Cumb, Brad Hamilton, Larry Krupsack. Also in attendance, Mayor Dan Carlson, Brian Krupsack, Adam Beering, Garrett Goon, City Attorney Nicholas Apps, uh, Ambulance Chief Joe Crutchmeyer, Fire Chief Ken Archie, Assistant Ambulance Chief Ken Moody, Assistant Fire Chief Dave Ryan Schmidt and Katie Sitt. Uh, item one, seminars, conferences, training. Uh, we had nothing. Two, discuss bow hunting and the city limits. Three, discuss ambulance service calls. Four, the committee <coughs> went into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Statutes 19.851C. Uh, motion made by Curtis Breda, seconded by Larry Krupsack. All committee members voted yes to enter closed session. And item five, the committee went into open session pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.852. Motion by Curtis Brenna, second by Bray Hamilton. All committee, committee members voted uh, yes to enter into open session. And no action is needed. Next committee report, property recreation and human affairs, group seven. Property Recreation and Human Affairs had one meeting to present. I make a motion to accept the minutes as second. Written. Motion and second to accept the minutes of the Property Recreation and Human Affairs <coughs> Committee report. All in favor? Aye. 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 To the Honorable Mention, to the Honorable <laughs> Mayor and members of the Nakusa Common Council, the Property Recreation and Human Affairs Committee meeting was held on Tuesday, July 7th, 2020 at 6.15 p.m. in the Nakusa Council Chambers. Members present were Brian Krupsack, Dan Downing, Garrett Kuhn, and Mike Trump. Also in attendance were Mayor Dan Carlson, Larry Krupsack, Adam Beering, Curtis Breda, City Attorney Nicholas Apps, Ambulance Chief Joe Kirchmar, Rick Schmidt of the DPW, Matt and Tanya Beaver, Casey Schroeder, and Todd and Kim Heath. Number one, recommend proceeding with Wisco Tree Team Developer Agreement. Number two, Recommend proceeding with community block grant from the Nutrativa Global. Three, discuss vacating Gabriel Lane. Four, recommend certified survey map for the lot on Wood Avenue. Three, discuss selling lot on First Street. Or sorry, five, discuss selling lot on First Street. Six, recommend $3,200 for the Nakusa School District YMCA Summer Recreation Program. Any questions? Make a motion to go with one, two, and four and six. Second. Motion and second to adopt items one, two, four, and six of the Property Recreation and Human Affairs Committee minutes. Uh, roll call vote, please. Brad? Yes. Quinn? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Come? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Tony? Yes. Perrin? Yes. Claire? Yes. Next committee report is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, wage and salary. Yeah. Apple, sir. Wage and salary had one meeting this month. I'd like to move to adopt the minutes as presented. Second. second. Motion and second to adopt the minutes of the wage and salary committee meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The Honorable Mayor, members of the Coosa Common Council. Wage and salary meeting was held Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020, at 5 p.m. in the Coosa Council Chambers. Members present were Brad Hamilton, Larry Krupsack, Dan Downing, and Brian Krupsack. Also in attendance were Mayor Dan Carlson, 
Mayor Schmidt from the DPW, Police Chief Sean Woods, Fire Chief Mike Archie, Dustin Moody, and Municipal Judge Ash Ashley Webb. Item 1, rec recommend raising Municipal Judge salary to $500 per month effective July 1, 2020. Item 2, recommend adopting North Shore Bank Health re Reimbursement Account for Retirees. Item 3, recommend adopting Facility Security Document and adding to handle. And item four, recommend adopting 2020 through 2022 the Fire Department wage proposal. No questions, I move to adopt items one, two, three, and four. Second. Um, if we're adopting all of them and I'm a no on one, I can hold it up. Oh. Which one do you want to number four? So I'll move to adopt items one, two, and three. Second. Motion and second to adopt items one, two, and three of the wage and salary committee report. Uh, roll call vote, please. Hamilton? Yes. Brian? Yes. Greta? Yes. Donnie? Yes. Buren? Yes. Larry? Yes. Tom? Yes. Boom? Yes. I move to adopt item four. Second. Motion and second to adopt item four of the Wage and Salary Committee report. Roll call vote, please. Hamilton? Yes. Come? Yes. Larry? Yes. Hearing? Yes. Coon? Yes. Brian? Yes. Brad? Yes. Donnie? No. Moving on then, the old business. Is there any uh, old business items to come before the council? Hearing none, move on to uh, new business. Uh, first item is uh, 2020 <coughs> ambulance service rates. Uh, Chief Kirchner? Yes, yeah, so I, I sent these out. Hopefully you got them while well, you have them from the last meeting, hopefully in writing, where I handed them out, plus they should be electronic for you. Um, we did a survey with LifeQuest, who's our billing company. The last time our rates were increased were in 2016. Um, so they looked at our rates. They looked at six different ambulance services besides ours. Four of them at the EMT paramedic critical care level, same as ours, one at IV tech level, one at EMT basic level. Did a comparison of the rates for them, came up with what their recommendations were for the rate increases, which are on those sheets in front of you. Um, do you have any specific questions on any of the, the rate increase amounts? Pretty much if you look at the, the last page, which is the, the summary of all six departments and ours, the rate increase they're suggesting for each of those levels puts us pretty much at about the, the second highest out of the seven different departments. But it brings us in line to what other departments in our area that aren't on this list as well are charging for their patient amounts. So I'm looking for your recommendations to sign their sheet, recommending that we want to adopt those rates and looking for what date you might want to have the rates increase. But the last one was not done at the beginning of the year, so I mean, I in theory, I think it could be done August 1st if you wanted August 1st. I so may as well. Second. Motion is second to adopt uh, the new 2020 ambulance service rates. We have a roll call vote, please. Effective eight, eight, oh. one. Yeah, eight, one. Yeah. Brian? Yes. Buren? Yes. Come? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Boone? Yes. Greta? Yes. Larry? Yes. Colin? Yes. Next item on the agenda is Ordinance 605 to amend intoxicating liquor and fermented beverage. 
Um, our county treasurer uh, kind of wanted us to do this. I mean, we always enforce the personal property tax. So like when we would send out memos and for renewal for the liquor and beer licenses for the establishments, uh, we requested that, you know, the beer man's got to be paid, personal property's got to be paid um, before issuing this license. Now, uh, we really didn't worry so much about the real estate taxes because uh, if, if, the local, if the taxes aren't paid to our local treasurer, the county uh, takes care of the collections. But they kind of said, well, you know, you, we really want you to uh, kind of start enforcing this uh, a, a little more with the real estate. Now, we've been fortunate through the years uh, that we haven't had an issue. But uh, uh, it's just basically all it is is uh, adding the word real estate taxes in that sentence so it spells it right out clearly that so that next year uh, uh, you know when I send out the memo that you know I'm going to be telling them that that's got to be paid off I, I think there's one business that has taxes that are still old yet to the treasurer's office up in Rap at the courthouse but uh, usually the key pays those off like August kind of like you know maybe that's just cash flow or whatever but uh, um, this would push it back so that that's got to be paid prior to July 1 when we start the new licensing period. So I make a motion to adopt the ordinance to change an ordinance of 605. I'll second. Motion is second to adopt the changes to ordinance 605. Do we have a vote? Please. Motion is Brian? Yes. Come? Yes. Coon? Yes. Larry? Yes. Donnie? Yes. Fred? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Beering? Yes. Uh, next item on the agenda are the various monthly reports. I'd entertain a motion to approve. So move. Second. Motion and second to approve the various monthly reports. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next item on the agenda is approval of the claims. So Mr. Rush. Um, we had the three uh, bill lists, and then we had a bunch of pay vouchers at Board of Appeals, 715, uh, wage and salary, 250, property rent, 305, oh, excuse me, 250. Public safety, 250. Public works, 250. Planning Commission, 355. Airport 110, Council 520, Ways and Means 250, Cameron 30, and Mayor 800. Move to approve the bills as presented. Second. Motion and second to approve the bills. Do we have a roll call vote, please? Greta? Yes. Deering? Yes. Coon? Yes. Come? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Donnie? Yes. Larry? Yes. Brian? Yes. Uh, next item on the agenda, are there any other issues as provided by law? Can you come forward? Motion to adjourn. All second. Motion to second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Sorry, I have to warn I just know enough how to get along. There you go.